it is time for us to try some problems on our own. You should pause this DVD to give you time to work out these problems. Then when you are finished, come back and check your answer. We have a stationary electron in a vacuum tube. Acquires a velocity of 5.3 times 10 to the 8th centimeters per second and a distance of 0 0.25 centimeters. Find the acceleration of the electron. Notice here that it gives you a distance of centimeters, but the velocity is also in centimeters per second. So you can keep the centimeters if we like. Since the question didn't tell us what units to report acceleration in, we are free to report them in whatever unit we would like. So I would suggest that you keep the centimeters. So go ahead and work on this one. When you are finished, please come back and check your answer. We need to draw a simple picture of what we've got. We've got an electron okay, that is in this vacuum tube. I'm just going to use a simple dash here as an electron. And in a distance of 0.25 centimeters, it now has a velocity of 5.3 times 10 to the 8th centimeters per second. So make a list of what you know. Well, we know that the 5.3 times 10 to the 8th has to be the final velocity. But does it tell us what the initial velocity is? The answer is yes, it does. Do you see the keyword? The keyword is stationary. So the initial velocity is zero. So making a list of everything that we know, we know the initial velocity is zero. We know the final velocity is 5.3 times 10 to the 8 centimeters per second. And we know the displacement is 0.25 centimeters. We're looking for the acceleration, but we don't know the time. So we need to use an equation that doesn't have time in it. That would be this equation here. But we are going to have to solve for the acceleration. We need to subtract v0 squared from both sides and divide both sides by 2x. Now here the initial velocity is 0 so our numerator is actually just going to be final velocity squared divided by 2x. So 5.3 times 10 to the 8 squared divided by 2 and 0.25 centimeters. You can do all of this without rounding to significant figures until the end. Your final answer should be 5.6 times 10 to the 17th centimeters per second squared. 5.6 times 10 to the 17th centimeters per second squared. Well, now let's take a look at another problem. Here we have a race car driver. He's traveling at 2.00 times 10 to the second miles per hour heading into a wall. What is the acceleration in feet per second squared that the driver experiences if he only travels 2.00 feet after the nose impacts the wall? If one g is 32.0 feet per second squared, how many g's is this? And how much time does it take to stop? You may have heard that term g before. Okay, uh, Fighter pilots use it they're making certain maneuvers they may say hey I pulled nine G's in that turn or something like that well a G is equal to the acceleration due to gravity so if you experience more than one G then you are experiencing that factor times the acceleration due to gravity well we've got a race car again it's my clip art <laughs> and he's gonna hit a brick wall oh no His initial velocity is 200 miles per hour. It's a pretty good head of steam to hit a brick wall. Definitely something that I don't want to try to do. And he's going to move two feet of distance by the time that nose impacts the wall. After that two feet, do we know anything else? Well, we know the final velocity. This is a crash. And that final velocity is going to be zero. So in physics problems, when we do have crashes, unless it specifically tells you otherwise, then you can assume that the final velocity is zero. 
you're not going to have a crash where the initial velocity is zero unless the object is just sitting there and some other object happens to hit it we'll get into that when we get into momentum problems but for right now you can just assume that the final velocity is zero unless it tells you specifically otherwise so we have an initial velocity of now it is 200 miles per hour there but all the other information is in feet per second in seconds and so we need to make sure that we get to feet per second for the velocity so converting the 200 miles per hour that's 293 feet per second we're looking for the acceleration okay so what is the acceleration in feet per second squared and so look what we have here again we're missing time so what equation do we use when we're missing time we're going to use this equation here again solving for the acceleration we've done this before we did this in the electron problem but this time the final velocity is zero so we need 293 squared and you needed to, to make sure that you take the negative after the squaring because the object is slowing down we would expect the acceleration to be negative here and so rounding to three significant figures you should get negative 21,500 feet per second squared now some of you may have negative 2.15 times 10 to the fourth feet per second squared and that's fine as well as long as your answer has the same significant figures as my answer then the use of scientific notation is optional so you could have reported in scientific notation here if you wanted to well it is asking how many G's is this okay well 32 feet per second squared is 1 G so you can use that as a conversion factor so negative 21,500 feet per second squared divided by 32 okay in that particular crash there's 672 G's which is an enormous amount and then the last question of this is asking how much time does it take for that car to stop so thinking about what we know here Okay, how much time is this now we have all of those variables except time so we can choose the variable that's simplest I would stay away from the last one just because that's quadratic and we can't use the fourth one because it doesn't have time so we're left with three or two here doesn't matter which one you use you just need to solve for time correctly you're going to subtract V0 from both sides and then you're going to divide both sides by A and so the final velocity is 0 293 feet per second divided by the acceleration we're going to round to three significant figures you should get 0 0.0136 seconds. 0 0.0136 seconds took the amount of time for that car to stop.